When thinking about where life could exist elsewhere in our own solar neighbourhood, the debate is often centred around the oceans of Europa, the surface of Mars and the clouds of Venus. But a relatively undiscussed body in our solar system could actually hold a genuine possibility that life exists or may have existed at one point within it. It's not what you might expect, however. When we think of life, we think of large planets, plentiful oceans, atmospheres. Well, as it turns out, this body may just prove that life is a bit more prevalent and resistant than that. It is the so-called minor planet of Ceres. Ceres is an asteroid, the largest of its kind, located within the main asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Comprised of mostly rock and ice, this little planet has recently been found to have key ingredients for organic life to emerge. The name Ceres originates from the Roman goddess of agriculture with said name. Maybe swathes of forest, crops and nature is a little bit of an exaggeration for this celestial body, but Ceres is certainly diverse, unique and very interesting. So let's dive into its frozen oceans as we search for life on the dwarf planet. Located at just under 2.8 astronomical units, 1 AU being the distance between Earth from the Sun, from our local star, Ceres is located within the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. We've covered the Kuiper Belt in this series before, a massive belt of debris located beyond the orbit of Neptune, but this belt is a lot more well known and is a lot closer to home. Ceres is essentially a large asteroid, and is the largest of the large asteroids within the belt, hence why it toes the line between asteroid and dwarf planet. It was first discovered in 1801 by astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi at the Astronomical Observatory of Palermo. In the years leading up to this, it was theorised that a planet like Ceres would exist between Mars and Jupiter as part of the now disproven Titus Bode law. The law stated that each planet moving further away from the Sun would have to orbit at twice the distance of the previous one, meaning the various planetary orbits in the solar system were increasing in radius exponentially. A discredited theory now, but it led astronomer Johannes Kepler to notice a gap between Mars and Jupiter and he theorised something undiscovered may lie there. This lucky coincidence led Hungarian astronomer Franz Zava von Zak to assemble a team of 24 astronomers nicknamed the Celestial Police to search the area for a planetary body in 1800. The team found several large asteroids that we now know to be in the asteroid belt, but it was Giuseppe Piazzi, an Italian astronomer who discovered the dwarf planet of Ceres by accident. He had been searching for star-like objects when he observed Ceres for the first time, and although he initially thought he'd found some sort of comet, further 23 observations eventually ended up with him labelling his discovery as a planet, and being invited to join the celestial police before illness meant he could no longer observe the skies. Estimates of this celestial body didn't really get much within the correct bounds. Some theorised it to be as small as 200 kilometres in diameter, whereas others placed it around Pluto's size, at 2,500 kilometres wide. We now know Ceres' size to be about 945 kilometres in diameter, meaning, and if you watch my video on the biggest things in the universe you'll know this, that Ceres is a comparative size to the top to bottom length of the United Kingdom. It takes 1,681 days to orbit the Sun, just over four and a half Earth years. Ceres' origin is still up for debate. We predict it to be roughly four and a half billion years old, and we theorise it might be a surviving protoplanet. A protoplanet, also known as a planetary embryo, is an asteroid-like body that rams into other embryo planets to form terrestrial planets. Most of the inner solar system protoplanets are believed to have been either merged into planets or ejected from the solar system altogether by Jupiter's orbit and gravity. Ceres seems to have survived these eventualities relatively unscathed, if true. Other theories, however, state that Ceres was actually formed within the Kuiper Belt before migrating nearer the Sun via various large gravitational influences. This theory holds weight given the presence of ammonia salts detected in Ceres' Akata crater, and also Ceres' believed formation under colder conditions than most planets and asteroids lends credibility to this theory too, meaning that the dwarf planet was formed beyond Jupiter's orbit for its competition. Ceres was originally considered a planet for about 50 years before being reclassified by early astronomers in the mid-1850s, after the discovery of other asteroids around it. It's now considered a dwarf planet, or minor planet, or large asteroid. It was actually Ceres and its neighbours that were crucial in the discovery of asteroids. Most of these asteroid rocks were originally thought to be like stars, but following the discoveries of these asteroids, astronomers realised they fell under a new classification. One year after Ceres' discovery in 1802, with the discovery of the second large asteroid, Pallas, William Herschel designated the term asteroid, which literally means star-like. 
Under the more recent Minor Planet designation system, Ceres' full name is actually 1 Ceres, followed by 2 Pallas, 3 Juno and 4 Vesta, numbered in the order of their discovery. In 2006, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet thanks to the discovery of Eris, another dwarf planet a year earlier. This put Ceres up for debate too, being a lot smaller. On the 24th of August 2006, a planetary definition was adopted that stated that a planet had to dominate its orbit, which ruled out asteroids from the get-go, as no asteroid in the belt actually cleared out its own orbital path, instead being part of the larger asteroid belt. It too became a dwarf planet. Dwarf planet or minor planet, what about the planet itself? Well, we know Ceres is made of mostly ice and rock. It has a rocky interior with an icy exterior. We have, interestingly, observed what could be the remnant of an ocean that once held liquid water, an essential building block for life as we know it. On the surface, ice mixes with various minerals, and you can even find iron-rich clay on its surface too, perfect for any aliens wanting to build a natural sandcastle on the surface. Ceres surface is relatively warm for an asteroid with an average surface temperature of 235 degrees Kelvin and that's minus 36 degrees Fahrenheit and minus 38 degrees Celsius. About five years ago in January 2014 we detected water vapour in several regions and discovered that water vapour comprises more of Ceres external makeup than we realised. This could be the result of outgassing or from a unique type of volcano called a cryovolcano which we will talk more about in a second. But this outgassing is actually a common feature of a comet. Internally, Ceres' mantle, which is about 100 kilometers thick, could contain up to 200 million cubic kilometers of water, which is more than all the fresh water on Earth. Aside from all that, some other interesting things about the planet is that the mass accounts for approximately a third of all of the asteroid belt's total mass, and it is the only belt object to be rounded by its own gravity, with perhaps the exception of Vesta. It is also the only classified dwarf planet inside the orbit of Neptune, and it's the 33rd largest celestial body in the solar system. But what makes this planet so interesting? Well, its composition lends itself to the formation of life as we know it, and so perhaps there is some form of life that has existed or currently exists on its surface. Its prospects for life are positive, and as such, we have been to observe it more to explore this idea. In February 2017, organic tholins were discovered in another of Ceres craters, Ernatet. These organic materials are a key ingredient for life to form and thrive, but what made it more interesting was the fact that these organic materials seem to be endogenous, meaning that they originated from inside the planet itself. Scientists were very pleased with this discovery, but something a bit more well known that brings the discussion of life to the table are the famous bright spots, a seemingly unique feature to Ceres. A year after detecting water vapour, NASA's Dawn spacecraft went to observe Ceres and entered its orbit in March 2015. This was when its cratered surface was discovered, and two very distinct bright spots were observed inside one such crater. Though NASA often dismissed this as reflectivity from glaciers, it was initially thought to be a cryovolcano, a concept mentioned earlier. Cryovolcanoes are a type of volcano that spew out ice, water, methane and ammonia instead of magma. 18 months after the bright spot discovery, Dawn scientists documented a mountain on Ceres named Ahuna Mons. This mountain is fairly unique as the dwarf planet doesn't seem to have any other mountains. What it did have was bright streaks, similar in appearance to the bright spots down its side. This pointed to the theory that Ahuna Mons is a cryovolcano. Near infrared spectra of the planet also suggested that the geologic activity may have something to do with the spots. Now however, NASA scientists believe the spots may have been caused by a form of brine related to the reflective ammonia salts on the surface. It may well be the cryovolcano theory, as some have pointed out that the bright spots seem to shine when they are even not facing the sun. Although both of these theories seem plausible, there is the outside chance that these patches may actually be a certain type of algae. We have species of algae on Earth that illuminate, so it wouldn't be outside the realms of possibility, albeit unlikely. Some theorise that life may have existed in the past in the liquid water oceans of Ceres, but not anymore. Even if it is devoid of life now, the planet does boast favourable conditions for life as we know it. Water on the surface, vapour, and the 20% carbon mass could provide the right conditions for organic chemistry. But for now, we really don't know. But the ignorance hasn't stopped some from drumming up wild conspiracy theories about the planet. Some have perceived the bright spots on Ceres as a candidate for hidden intelligent alien life, as they appear to show a power source or some kind of underground base for an alien civilization using the asteroid as an outpost to explore the solar system. 
Secure Team 10, probably one of the worst conspiracy based channels on YouTube, after myself of course, claimed that the Dawn spacecraft could have revealed the presence of a 10 mile high alien base on the planet's surface that was being hidden by the government. Others claim to have seen alien drones flying around, and yeah. Okay, so I'd usually indulge this kind of creepy space theory. I mean, I was able even to comprehend the idea that the Buetes void is the result of a super civilization consuming trillions of stars, but come on, this is so, so dumb. Habitability is no guarantee of presence. Just because Ceres is habitable and suitable for life and primitive life, that doesn't mean that a single microorganism has to exist at all on a surface. Perhaps the shiny spots do open the door to the possibility of some form of life, but until more studies are done, we cannot confirm nor deny this. If life in any form actually does exist on Ceres, however, then it's incredibly likely that it evolved independently to Earth, and if so, the process of life formation may be more robust and common than we expected. If we can find life prevalent and resilient enough to survive for billions of years on the surface of an asteroid, then who knows what Earth-like planets, such as Kepler-22b, could hold. Life could be common. If Ceres has life against all odds, then Jupiter's Europa stands a very good chance of having some form of life in its oceans, and who knows what could be elsewhere in the solar system. Let's hope future observations of Ceres and such other places can reveal this possibility, because if so, it opens up the potential for an entire galaxy full of amazing, varied life for us to discover and learn from, in all of its corners. Imagine the kind of knowledge such a library of interplanetary species would give us, and unlocking all of that potential could begin with this remote, tiny, but brilliant celestial body that is the planet of Ceres. And with that, thank you very much for watching, and always keep reaching for the stars, and Happy New Year.